Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crimes. I want to tell you how fortunate and honored and lucky I was to meet three Afro-American men that were true legend and true trendsetters, you understand? And my father was tight with two of them. I want to start off by saying, first of all, the Honorable Coleman A. Young, our mayor, was a Tuskegee Airman, a red tail, you understand? So when you see that movie, Coleman Young saved and made the way for a whole lot of white kids to be born. Because a whole lot of them planes wouldn't have made it and those white men wouldn't have made it home to have children and have a family. And they was forever, forever, forever indebted to Coleman Young. Milton Henry was also a Tuskegee airman. He got one of his friends that lives he saved that worked on the Supreme Court in Pennsylvania to take my father's case up. So Milton Henry, because of his connection as a Tuskegee Airman and a life <coughs> or countless lives of white men that they saved, you understand? If you want to take a look at it, take it and look at the movie Red Tail. Now I'm going to give you the third one. It was a girl by the name of Tom DeLea. She lived in Southfield. She, I met her in first grade and everybody used to tease her and everything. She lived directly across the street from Smokey Robinson. And Smokey Robinson and her mother were tight. He would send her a Christmas card and cards to her death. So she lived directly across the street from Smokey Robinson. She was in the first grade with me and everybody was teasing her. And because I had went through basically damn near the same thing. I befriended Tom DeLea. And then my sister befriended her a year or so later, and we used to go by her house. Her father was a Tuskegee Airman, high, high, so high up, you can't even imagine. He wound up getting killed on a secret mission in the military. She got pictures of him. He had that sterling Rolex that that white man sold on that show, never had worn. He had one. She had it in her possession, but it was broke. I swear for God, it was the same watch, and he was an airman in the military. How? If she showed the picture of him, you'd know he was a big dog. Tom DeLea's father. So Coleman Young was a Tuskegee Airman. Milton Henry was a Tuskegee Airman. And Tom DeLand's father was a Tuskegee Airman. Amazing. He would only come home. I'm going to be y'all just like y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all the truth. He was just like my father. God damn it, he had come home for one night and he gone. They might not see him for another three, four, six months. That's the type he was. He'd come home and he was gone. Never. I seen that man one time. That's it. One time. Now I'm going to another story. You understand. But let me just go on and say this about Coleman Young and the city of Detroit. Coleman Young kept a balanced budget. The mayor before him did not and he was white. Coleman Young had a hell of fine relationship with the Ford and Henry Ford family. That's how Coleman Young got most things done in the city of Detroit. Just like right now, you see Quicken Loans, Dan Gilbert has stepped up, Neelage and them, but Coleman Young had the Ford family. You understand? So that's who, as I said to y'all, built the Renaissance, which 
General Motors headquarters right here today. I keep telling y'all, go to Greenfield Village. And I've been there many times as a kid with the school in Southfield. The Ford family owned Dearborn. I've been to Greenfield Village so much and ate the salt water tappies and all that and seen the bus Rosa Park sat on and the car John F. Kennedy got killed in. All of those wonderful things are in Greenfield Village. And the Ford family bring them to you. You can make butter like they do in the old day. So you understand, let me say this to you. If you know your history, you'll later on know the Ford family started the first assembly line and created the middle class, had a big thing to do with it. Jimmy Hoffa and them had a thing out about strikes and strike busters and all that. So look at Ford. He's been there the whole time. He has been a super, super, super billionaire all the time. That's probably why Donald Trump didn't ask the Ford family in the first place to do it because they know he a crook. Just like everybody else know he a crook. And the Fords is the dumb dollars. They've been there. Ain't no question about it. I told you all when the job needed to be done, if I was the president of the United States, I would have called Henry Ford and the Ford family immediately because I know they're in the healthcare system. And I want to say to y'all one more time, and I'm going to stop burning your ear. Benedict Arnold, Donald J. Trump is an enemy to the American people. He's lying to you all every day. He's scared to even correct it. He don't want to admit he lied to you about math. He probably should wear it. Please. And then they still want to lie to us like he's way up in the polls. Can y'all believe this? Man, there's no way those polls are right. It's impossible. They were wrong last time when he won, and they're wrong this time. Donald Trump lost the election by three and a half million votes. He did not, as Madeira said, he didn't win the first time. Hell, hell he ain't won no time. Hell, talking about he won. He lost the popular vote by three and a half million. No president in history has ever lost a popular vote by that much, and then you take the electoral and slam him in there. It's really supposed to speak to the people. So that lets you know that system, that electoral system, has to be changed because it's not for the people. The popular vote should be the vote that put you in. An electoral vote shouldn't mean shit. It's because it's the government for the people, by the people. And electoral votes takes that away from the people. So we need to do away with this electoral voting system. This is Eddie Jackson Jr. telling you about legends that were black, and there are plenty more to come. There, Rosa Park wasn't the first sister that sat on the bus. She just was the one that got famous for it. So this is why I say to y'all, Afro-Americans need they just do and they stories to be told. You understand? So don't think it was just my, uh, Michael Corleone and, and, and all of them. There was Eddie Jackson too and the Leroy Kyers. You understand? Let's be real and take it back for us to the beginning. Shit. You know, so I'm just being honest about it. You know, we was out there doing our thing and that's why I keep telling y'all, check out numbers, man. They handled a lot of money and helped us along the way. Let's not just forget about them. There was a lot of them out there like Bumpy Johnson getting down, paving the way for us too. I don't want to sit here like, hey, Eddie Jackson was the greatest thing in the world. I'm telling you what he was. You understand? That's all I'm telling you. And you make that decision for yourself. I'm just telling you true stories. And the fat man was doing his thing. And as I tell you, his relationship with Coleman Young started as a senator, okay, and stayed with him all the way up the scale to mayor. When he first met Coleman Young, he was not a mayor. He was Senator Young, coming from the Tuskegee Airmen, saving all these white folks' lives, countless numbers of them. That's why they never could touch this man. He's a real legend even to white people. 
Milton Henry is a legend to white people. Tom DeLea's father is a legend to white people. This is Eddie Jackson Jr., Real True Street Crime, coming at you, letting you know we have some black heroes, and their stories need to be told. It needs to be a movie made about Coleman A. Young. It needs to be a movie made about Milton Henry. It needs to be a movie made about Tom DeLay's father. I'm telling you, all three of them was hell of a Tuskegee Air men. And white folks respect that more than anything because they saved their life. As Coleman directly said from his mouth many times, they didn't save my life. I saved their ass. I bought my ass in to save their ass. They didn't come in to save my ass. So that's why Coleman and Young always had that attitude until the day he died because he seen white men at their scariest. He seen them with the most fear in their eyes that any black man could ever see them. They were so scared. Coleman Young and them used to laugh at them. They were so scared. Subscribe. This is Eddie Jackson Jr. saying I ain't gonna bring you here no longer. Thank you to all of y'all. Subscribe and share. Thank you. I appreciate all y'all. Hit my link up and subscribe. I'm out. Peace and